Well, it's how we mentioned, I'm a genetic counselor here at the MAC. Um, thanks so much for joining us this morning. When, um, one question we often hear uh, after people get a diagnosis, kind of the shock of dementia, that diagnosis is, where did it come from? And could it be inherited? Are other people in my family at risk? I think those are kind of common worries that follow the initial diagnosis. Sometimes when I talk about genetics, I think this is what people see in their heads. <laughs> um, it is really as if I'm speaking a foreign language. What language is that? It's Russian. Um, and if Google Translate is correct, it says, genetics is confusing and complicated. Um, as we're trying to explain genetics, my colleagues and I um, talk about cells and chromosomes and DNA and nucleotides and mutations. But this morning, I would like to try to step back, take a little different approach, maybe get rid of all that just for a little bit, cleanse your palate, and let's talk about your genetic code as though it were an instruction manual. And it's going to be aptly titled, The Book of You. It's a very thick book. It has about 30,000 different pages of instructions, and each page is unique. So, a you know, just let's think of an instruction, send the gray cat down the hall. Now, if there were a typo in this instruction, you might see this, send the gray cat down the ball. Now, that doesn't make very much sense. There might be a situation where a word is completely missing. Send the gray cat the hall. That also is hard to figure out exactly what that means. Or there might be a word that's repeated over and over and over again, really confusing the whole meaning of the sentence. So if you look at that person next to you, you and they have instruction manuals that are about 99.9% .9 the same. That's why we all have noses and hearts and ten toes. One instruction might say something like, go buy a new shirt. But you also have about 3.5 million differences from that person next to you. So there might be just a different spelling of a word, go buy, B-Y-E, a new shirt. So it doesn't, you can still get the meaning out of the sentence, but it's a variation. Or even another, a third way of doing that. Not quite right, but as we read it, go buy a new shirt, we can still get the meaning. So when we think about these two types of changes, there's that major change where the entire meaning of the instruction is lost. These by themselves can cause disease. So that's when we change, send the gray cat down the hall, to send the gray cat down the ball. And if we think about Alzheimer's as an example, um, of, and we think about a major change, there are three known genes that if there's a major change, will cause disease. And these are called APP, PSEN1, and PSEN2. Now Alzheimer's, when it's caused by a change in one of these genes, has a little different profile. There's very early onset, usually prior to age 60, There'll be multiple people affected in many generations. And for these particular families, there's a 50% risk for children of a person with this type of major change in their instruction manual. But these are rare. Only about 1% of Alzheimer's disease are caused by a single change in one of these genes. So again, two types of changes, these major ones, and then we went over the minor ones where there's a variation that by itself does not cause disease, but it may increase or decrease the risk of a disease. We looked at those three different variants of the same sentence. So again, using Alzheimer's as an example and thinking about a minor change or a genetic risk gene, we think about APOE. It comes in three different variations. There's one variation called E4, which increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease but it does not directly cause the disease. People with E4 will not necessarily develop Alzheimer's disease, and people with Alzheimer's disease don't always have E4. So another important thing about the Book of You 
is there's volume one and there's volume two. A good thing that we all have a backup copy. When you have children, you only pass on one of your volumes. And we'd all like to pass on the volume with our, our uh, keen sense of direction and our straight teeth and our, our good wit and leave behind the volume that has hyper, you know, high cholesterol or a high risk for dementia. But the truth is that we really don't have any, um, any choice. It's random. <coughs> So most dementia is not caused by a major change in the book of view, but rather by several minor changes plus environmental factors. And as you can see represented here, Alzheimer's disease, about 75% is sporadic, meaning there's no other person in the family with it, and about 24% it's familial, there's other people in the family probably who have some of these minor changes, and only 1% due to a major change. So what's happening at the MAC with genetics and genetic counseling? We are carefully detailing the extended family's medical history. So thank you for all of you who have answered my questions about what age exactly did your grandmother die, and is your cousin left-handed? Um, we're putting all that together to make pictures like this that are computerized, that we can analyze, query, detail, and gather all kinds of information about you and, your, and the medical history of your relatives. Um, we are also, from a blood sample, analyzing genetic information and continuing to discover the meaning of minor and major variations. And as we analyze the errors that our bodies make <coughs> when major and minor genetic changes occur, <coughs> excuse me, these findings, we hope, will lead to better therapies and treatments. So if we go back to our original question, is dementia genetic? I would try to provide this answer. Most cases are probably the result of several minor genetic changes plus environmental factors. And in some families, they do have a major genetic change that will cause dementia in those who inherit the change and live long enough. But these are rare. So I'd like to thank all of my colleagues who are very welcoming and encouraging in my first year at the MAP. And I especially want to thank all of you uh, participants and families who make our work possible. Thank you.